I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. You know, they say you have your whole life to record your first album and maybe a year to record your second one. We talked to Mike Reno of Loverboy about the vibe going into that famous first debut Loverboy album on Rock History Music. Most artists record their debut album in their late teens or early 20s. Of course, there are a lot of exceptions to that rule. But you have your entire life up to that point, all your life experiences, as young as you may be, to put everything you've learned into that debut album. If it's successful, you get to record a second one. But usually the timeline is like one year or less. Mike Reno of Loverboy on that first album. Like, turn me loose. Like, you're soaring on that. Was that improvised? Did that just come out of you? Well, there's an interesting story about Turn Me Loose. We recorded it and put it away. And I popped in the studio one night and Paul was doing some guitar parts. And I said to the to the group, uh, you know, Fairburn and Rock and, and Mike Fraser, and, and I said to Paul, I said, guys, could you put Turn Me Loose? I want to sing it again. And they went, what are you talking about? Because a lot, a lot, a lot of people know this, but I'll tell you, I know you know it, but what you have to do is you have to take the tape off and then you have to realign the 24 tracks with the new tape, you have to find, then you have to do a mix of Turn Me Loose again and bring it all up. And then you have to get the microphones and get to warm them up and everything. So it's like an hour later, I talked him into it and they, they set it up for me. And when I sang it, I almost was in a trance. I, it's hard to really describe, but I just started singing. I changed a bunch of the words. I threw the scream in, the scream wasn't there. And I could see everybody in the, in the control room, they were just holding their hands up going, oh, God, this is so much better. And I walked outside, I was all kind of sweaty and I looked up and the moon was full. It was a full moon right above the other building across, across and I went, oh my God, the, the full moon really got me. And that, that's, that's a true story. You're like a howling wolf on that and all the right reasons. But what, I, I remember hearing that the, like the video, cause I got my little notes, that's why I look over here. Um, a video, this, uh, the, the director thought it was a, a funny thing or something cause there's kissing, there's smacking, there's biting, there's hanging a little spanking in that video i just spit on my microphone but uh um you know what it is those guys do this is before mtv was just starting cbs sent a, asked us to meet in albany new york at the shrine i think it was called the shrine theater anyways a big old thing like the orpheum and they wanted to film us playing live so that's what we did. They said, bring all your clothes because we're going to change for each song. And, you know, so we record a bunch of stuff and then we change and record another song. Then we would change and record another song. We were there all weekend. And what they wanted to do is take that live performance stuff back to Los Angeles or probably New York because we were, they were close. And what they did with it was just what they did with it. And they just made it kind of funny. I know it was black and white pieces put in and these people slapping each other during different, and you know, I know what you mean. It is a bit goofy, but it was- It works, I think. They, they, sent, they sent three of those to a, a little company that nobody ever heard of called MTV. The first week MTV was open and they didn't have enough content. So they played us constantly. We were on heavy rotation on MTV. And Loverboy, the little band from Vancouver, became this international success. And a lot of it was because of uh, MTV. So there you go. You know, they might have put a bunch of goofy parts in it, but it, it got us known. It really got us known. What were you and like when you were... Sorry, go ahead. And we did live performance, which is kind of what we're all about. Yeah. You know, the uh, uh, keeping a lineup the same, I know when, you know, when Scott passed, but and then Spider came in, but I, I remember, you know, looking, you really get an image of a band. I mean, you guys should want to kill each other by now, but you're still a unit. You're still yeah. not going out on interviews. Cause I, you know, I mean, all respect to John Anderson. I love the man. It was one of my biggest interviews, but at the same time, he just said, man, there was a, there's so much going on. Uh, and, and you look at what discographies or Wikipedia members, and it's like this sometimes of how yeah, many yeah. members were. So what is it? I mean, I know it's a simpleton question, but what is it that you guys, how can you guys stay together so long and still do it and still sound great? Well, first off, when we get together and play, we, 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 we're, we're lover boy. We're not trying to sound like anybody. We're just lover boy. And those songs, they hold us together. It's, it's, it's the respect for those songs. Those songs became classic rock hits. And luck, thank God, 
but you know what? We play them just like we wrote them and recorded them. So it's really just what we do. It's not like we go out of our way to sound like that. That's just how we sound. I, I play a lot of times with other bands and very rare that we get the same groove and the same feel, you know, because the other bands, they think they got it. But when I play, you know, when I, if I'm doing like a charity or something and the band can't get there, um, I, I try my best. But when, I, when the band's playing together, which, you know, it's just like, it's just like your hand fitting into a perfect glove. You know, it's just, it's just right on. It's, it's a comforting feeling, actually. When Scott passed, what what's what's that do to a, first of all, he's a friend and 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 uh, he's in the band and he's part of that structure. What does that do to a band? How how much pausing did you need to do, or do you guys have to keep going because you're a this is a successful unit? Can I talk about that? Yeah, yeah. It was my he was actually my best friend. It was a big, big loss. I didn't know if I'd ever go back and do anything again. I was at that point, I just and everybody knew just by looking at me, they didn't even want to talk about it. They just said, take as much time as you need. We're not even gonna talk about anything. Just, it's blank. It's a blank page. And after a lot of emails came in saying, you know, that, and a lot of people would, would, would get a hold of us or send letters. And, and the essence of it all was, this is a huge loss, but an even huger loss would be if the band didn't perform again. And that's kind of what made me think, you know, if that's really the reality is it is a huge loss and it probably would be even a bigger loss if we decided to pack it in because of that. So out of respect, I think, for the fans and, and to, to carry on the torch for, for him, Scott, I, and we came and I remember uh, Scott was a very generous guy. He gave Spider uh, one of his bases years ago because he had a few of them for touring and it was the Spectre. The Spectre bass, that's just the sound of the Turn Me Loose guitar in the studio. And Scott had a couple, and he ended up giving one to Spider. And a few people came out and tried and rehearsed with us to see if we could. And I wasn't feeling it until Spider walked into rehearsal, and he walked over to me and he took the bass out of the case and he put it in my arms. He said, Scott gave me this. And he put it in my arms, just kind of like passing me a baby. And I just went, wow, this is, that was really special. And, you know, really brought a tear to my eye. And I just went, thanks, Bites. And it really was something, you know, it was, it was a moment. And I knew he was the guy. It's like a rite of passage almost, you know? Not that he needed one, because Spider is, you know, oh, wow. But. Yeah, and that's, he's, he's been a loyal guy with the band. It's always lover boy first. I know he still plays with Streetheart, which is great. Streetheart are mostly do Canadian shows. We, we play all over the place. And Spider's always there for us. And he, uh, he never misses a show. And, He's a wonderful guy. A great, great, great addition to the band. Oh, God, yeah. If you want to see the entire interview, it's on our sister channel. The link is at the very top of the description of this video. Make sure you like this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get to 100,000. We're almost there. Share our videos and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. Take good care of yourself. This is Rock History Music.